our main character, Jisoo, is living a double life. Seemingly a top student with a bright future ahead of him. After being abandoned by his parents, Jisoo has turned to a life of crime. Under the pseudonym Uncle, Jisoo provides security for an illegal sex work business, aided by the mysterious Wong Chul, also known as Old Man. Together, Jisoo and Wong Chul provide sex workers with jobs and promise to protect them from dangerous situations. The duo have been successful in their crimes because they communicate through burner phones fitted voice modification, which hides their identity from not only law enforcement, but also their own clients. Jisoo's complicated double life becomes even more challenging when he learns that his classmate, Minhee, is working as a sex worker who uses his service. During a school project with his crush, the wealthy Gilri, Minhee finds herself in a dangerous situation and call the service, and Jisoo risks everything to save her. Sensing hidden secrets, Gilri steals Jisoo's business phone, cracks his password, and begins to blackmail him. As it turns out, although Gilri comes from a wealthy family, she feels suffocated by her controlling parents and is desperate for money of her own. The situation escalates when Gilri accepts a job for Minhee, who is suffering from PTSD after her last job and has a panic attack during the job. Meanwhile, Jisoo tries to track his hidden phone, and, at the same time, his father appears and promises him money if he comes to visit him in Ulsan, a different city. Afraid of being exposed, Jisoo stays in his apartment, but when Gilri shows up to steal his money, she watches Jisoo's father steal all of Jisoo's savings. Simultaneously, Jisoo discovers that Gilri is his blackmailer and being devastated by his father stealing his hard-earned money, Jisoo is in shock. In the aftermath, Gilri protects Jisoo from Minhee's bully boyfriend by claiming he is her boyfriend and offering to recruit her judo friends to expand his business. Gilri and Jisoo travel to Ulsan to retrieve the stolen money from Jisoo's father, but they find out his father put all of it in cryptocurrency, which has since crashed. Back in Seoul, Jisoo struggles to make ends meet, and his exhaustion eventually reaches a breaking point after he fails his midterm exam and punches a classmate. In the end, despite his initial reluctance, he eventually accepts Gilri's proposal to partner up. Meanwhile, Mr. Lee tries his best to convince Min Hee to quit her job, but she refuses. So, when Jisoo is finally back in business with Mr. Lee, trouble still looms as Min Hee continues to work in the illegal sex work ring. Things take a dark turn when a detective investigating a possible case of sex trafficking by a minor encounters Min Hee's bag at school. Meanwhile, Kite, Min Hee's violent boyfriend, teaches Che Bin how to bully Jisoo without Gil Ri finding out, leading him to vandalize Jisoo's locker and slip an adult toy into his bag. When a teacher starts searching the students' bags at Che Bin and Kite's suggestion, Jisoo refuses because he has been keeping his money in his backpack to protect it after the incident with his father. Ultimately, Gil Ri saves the day by pulling the fire alarm, and after discovering the planted men's toy in his bag, Jisoo and Gil Ri hide their money on the sofa of the counseling office. At Kite's birthday party, Min Hee gives him a cap as a gift, but he finds it cheap, causing her to storm out. She later gives it to Jisoo, which makes Gil Ri jealous. Meanwhile, Gilri manages to recruit their first male sex worker, an idol trainee named Tae Rin. Back at school, Gilri and Jisoo are shaken when they see Min Hee sitting with the detective. Determined to keep Min Hee quiet about their secret operation and to further protect their business, Gilri convinces Jisoo to fire Min Hee, but she doesn't take it well. After school, Min Hee takes Jisoo to Mr. Lee to get her severance pay. But they are quickly interrupted by Dae Yol, the karaoke club owner, who has set a trap for Tae Rim, the idle trainee part-time sex worker that Gil rehired, who he thinks slept with his girlfriend Mi Young and ends up attacking Mr. Lee. As they flee, Dae Yol realizes Jisoo's phone matches the number on his girlfriend's phone. Will he try to attack Jisoo next? After the attack, Min Hee frantically contacts Detective Lee Hae Ki Yong and rushes Mr. Lee to the hospital, where he was hit by an axe by Dae Yol's men. The detective presses Min Hee for information and learns that Jisoo was taken by the attackers. Meanwhile, Jisoo is held captive by Dae Yol's men, who try to saw off his arm, but luckily, Mi Young intervenes. Not recognizing Jisoo, Mi Young unknowingly helps Jisoo convince Dae Yol that he is just a middleman who is keeping his true boss, Mr. Lee, safe, even though this isn't true. Dae Yol interrogates Jisoo about the sex trafficking business, and Jisoo, unwilling to reveal information, contacts Gil Ri, who currently has Uncle's phone, which is Jisoo's business phone. After pretending to be Uncle, Gil Ri suggests working with the karaoke club, but Jisoo is afraid and tells her to handle it on her own. At this point, we see a flashback to one year ago, when Mr. Lee, at that time a homeless man, came to the rescue of a young Jisoo who was being bullied by some thugs. Jisoo, already working as a broker, was carrying a large number of banknotes, which the bullies were trying to steal. Grateful for Mr. Lee's help, Jisoo leaves a phone next to him, which Mr. Lee still uses to contact Uncle in the present day. 
Fast forward to the present, Minhee has stopped going to school, and Jisoo visits her at the hospital, where she is staying with Mr. Lee to try to convince her not to talk to the police. Shortly after, Jisoo receives a call from Dae Yol, who threatens him to drop out of school and work full time for him, blaming Gilri for ruining his education. Gilri, under the guise of being uncle, tries to refuse Dae Yol's deal. But, thanks to a tracker hidden in the box of money he gave them, Dae Yol kidnaps her. Holding Gilri hostage, Dae Yol calls Jisoo from Gilri's phone, threatening to kill her if he doesn't come. When Jisoo rushes to the location, he is knocked unconscious by Dae Yol's men. In his dream, he has a conversation with his father, admitting to himself that he is a pimp, a tag that he has refused to admit to up until now. Meanwhile, Gilri stabs Dae Yol multiple times, and Gilri and Jisoo escape to a motel. After resting and bonding, Gilri sneaks into the karaoke club and switches Dae Yol's phone with uncles, but he catches her and starts choking her. Hite arrives with other high schoolers, and they start fighting Dae Yol's men. During the fight, Mr. Lee and Dae Yol kill each other on the roof. When Detective Lee finds Dae Yol's car, upon Min Hee's request, she calls for backup, arresting several people, including Kite, who spots the cap that Min Hee gave to Jisoo. At the station, Kite is pressured to explain the incident, but, still unaware of the depth of the ring, he is not able to tell them much. After the fight, Jisoo decides to quit being a broker, but Min Hee blames Jisoo for Mr. Lee's death, which she feels could have been prevented if he had listened to her and gone to the police. To make matters worse, Min Hee's classmates start bullying her after her secret is revealed and, in a dream, Jisoo buries Min Hee's body, but then he transforms into her. Desperate to escape, Gilri blackmails her own parents, demanding a large sum of money in return for not revealing proof Tae Rim was a sex worker, which would hurt their investment in his company. With the money, Gilri buys a one-way ticket to Sydney and asks Jisoo to come with her, but he refuses. Once he is finished being questioned by the police, Hite confronts Minhee, showing her the cap he found at the karaoke club, and she realizes that Jisoo was there. Minhee calls Jisoo and demands to meet, where he eventually admits he is uncle and that Gilri is involved, a confession that she records. Quickly realizing the danger he is in, Jisoo fights Minhee for her phone, but she ends up falling down the stairs. Despite bleeding profusely from her head, Jisoo steals her phone and leaves without calling for help. Back at his apartment, Jisoo starts packing agitatedly, but when Kite finds out Jisoo was Min Hee's broker, he stabs Jisoo multiple times with a pair of scissors. Gilri knocks Kite out and helps a wounded Jisoo out of the apartment. Extracurricular ends with Detective Lee following the trail of blood out of Jisoo's empty apartment to an empty stairwell. 